What is up you sexy YouTube mother lovers? If you've been a fan of the channel, you know I kind of like AKs. I've got short AKs. I've got long AKs. I've got quiet AKs. In fact, I've kind of quietly made it a mission of mine to try to get one of every major kind of AK variant out there. Which is pretty damn hard. Especially since that includes some very, very, very rare pieces, including one piece that is so rare that I pretty much I pretty much decided that I was never going to be able to own one uh, or, or afford one or even never find one. That is until today. This is the Type 1 AK-47. The original and one of the rarest, if not the rarest, AK variants here in the US. And today I get to shoot it. That's just really neat. You know, I kind of had to. So I think it goes without saying that this is now <laughs> like the crown jewel of my collection. Unfortunately, this gun was broken by the ATF, so to speak, uh, so it is semi-auto only, but don't worry, we are working on the full auto conversion. The only reason it isn't full auto already, because we do have the licenses and everything for all of that, is because the, the fire control group and the auto sear setup with the selector is slightly different than the typical AK, and we want to figure out how to properly convert this to its original full auto configuration without harming any of the original parts. But once we figure that part out, you best be damn sure we're going to do a video on one of the very few full auto Type 1 AK-47s in the country. So if you haven't already subscribed, now would be a good time to do so, because you know you don't want to miss out on that. I mean, come on, this thing is just fucking beautiful. Seriously, go ahead, subscribe. I'll, uh, I'll wait. Feels nice out. Go ahead, take your time. I, I can keep myself busy. Awesome, thank you for that. <laughs> As you can tell, there's a lot on this gun that is just different, so radically different. A lot of the stuff is the same, and it's kind of cool to see, I mean, 70 plus years later, how much uh, this resembles AKs, especially on the inside, uh, AKs that are still being manufactured today, but there's a lot of stuff that is definitely different and it's really cool to see what they changed and where they started. So yeah, we're gonna do a deep dive in what makes the Type 1 so different, but before we do that, this gun was incredibly, it wasn't cheap, so time to thank our sponsor. Now the sponsor of today's video that was able to make this purchase happen is my bookie. Now I know less than nothing about sports, but I know a lot of you guys actually do. You know, sports, shooting, Dude stuff. But apparently, on Sunday night, Le Lemare Jackson uh, goes head to head with Patrick, my homies. Uh, if either of those names mean anything to you. But I'm told it's a can't miss matchup, and my bookie has all the action. If you're looking for what to bet in this game, prop bets are an easy way to get an edge. Being down 0 to 3 all time against my homies, you know Lamar. Honestly, these people could be baseball players. But apparently this Lamar guy has something to prove, so the over on his total rushing yards looks like a good bet. But here's the best part. If you actually use the code BRANDON down at MyBookie, whenever you make your first deposit, they will instantly double your deposit. That's double your deposit, double your money, double your bet, double your winnings. It's basically free money to bet with. Not the kind of money that uh, your dad had to sell your TV for when you were 12 and you, you couldn't figure out why. But anyhow, go ahead and at least check them out, show them some love, and use code BRANDON. Get you some free gambling money. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. All right, so now let's talk about the Type 1. First of all, let me go ahead and clear the gun. Um, as you notice, so the gun is clear. As you notice, this magazine that we've been using today uh, is a slab side magazine, Russian slab side. Real inventive name, you know, because it's 
flat. It's got a slab side. These aren't super rare, but they are kind of hard to come by. Um, I need to pick up a couple more of these actually. These would more or less be the correct magazine for some of the early AK variants like the Type 1 and the Type 2. So we'll do that over here. So first off, what I wanted to show you is that this is a Type 1 made in 1949. Legitimately making this one of the earliest AKs ever made. Even though it's called the AK-47, they weren't really mass produced in 47. That came a little bit later. So yeah, having one that is stamped on the front trunnion, 1949 is uh, quite, as the kids say, poggers. So let's talk about the receiver. So the Type 2 and the Type 3 AKs are milled. That means the receiver and the both trunnions are all one big piece of steel. Uh, with the components and, and basically the features on the inside of the receiver just milled away from one giant block. It makes them heavier, it makes them very expensive to do, but they're incredibly durable. And until the AKM rolled around, uh, that was probably the best way that Russia knew how to manufacture AK-47s in decent number. But the Type 1 is not milled. The Type 1 receiver is stamped. You can see uh, ribbings here, and these are uh, actually more or less uh, flush rivets. They don't have the uh, big rivet heads like the AKM might have. These are kind of ugly, <laughs> but that's actually correct. This is the way that they look. And as you can see here, now that I've fold uh, the stock a little bit, you've got three of those flush rivets in the rear trunnion as well. Now I'm gonna be kind of going broad strokes here. I could literally spend an hour talking about all the shit on this gun that is different from an AKM and other AK variants that I just think is really cool. I'm not gonna do that because like I said, this video would be a fucking hour long, but it's gonna go over some of the major things. So take this top cover off here, take our recoil spring assembly out. Again, pretty much AK-ish. Um, nose there looks a little different, but you know, pretty much milled AK looking recoil spring. Take our bolt carrier out and we run into this. Bolt and bolt carrier look pretty much the same as, you know, most just milled AKs, nothing really remarkable there. But up here on the gas piston, uh, we have a fluted piston, which is really interesting. Now this kit is not numbers matching, uh, which is not really all that surprising. I'm just kind of lucky to have one at all, so that's not super bothersome for me. Now one of the biggest standouts of the Type 1 versus uh, any other AK or the AKM uh, is the front trunnion area. Now the front trunnion here, uh, normally you'd have rivets sitting right here on the side, just like uh, you've got our AKM front trunnion here. We've got three rivets uh, on each side. So two here through the, uh, the barrel hole that squish on the inside, and then one here in the magwell. Front trunnion, of course, uh, holds your barrel in the receiver, your barrel assembly in the receiver, has your barrel pin here, and it contains the locking lugs that you know prevent the gun from exploding. But it ends here, at the magwell. Now on the Type 1, we have uh, our rivets here are on the bottom of the trunnion, not uh, through the middle here or through the meat of it. But it's actually kind of interesting because it doesn't end at the magwell. In fact, one of the things that makes the Type 1 stand out is that uh, it goes all the way back on both sides to the uh, point where it actually contains the ejector. Now on a typical AKM, that's just part of the stamp lower rails that are spot welded in place. Uh, not on the Type 1. On the Type 1, it is actually part of the front trunnion. It is milled into the front trunnion. And instead of a magwell dimple here, the front trunnion actually extends into the magwell. And that's why these two rivets are here on both sides, is those are actually front trunnion rivets as well. So they rivet the overhang on that front trunnion there to the receiver, and then they grind it flush on the inside for magazine clearance. You'll also notice like ribs here, like uh, there's a long rib on this side, there's a short rib back here by the rear trunnion on the uh, charging handle side, and one above the, the magwell rivets there. These are of course stamped into the receiver, uh, probably just for strength. Plus, you know, they look dope as hell. The selector on a standard AK will go all the way through, and there's a little hole there, and that's what it uh, kind of hinges on. It goes all the way through the receiver, fits in that little hole. Uh, not the Type 1. <laughs> the Type 1 just has this little lever here um, that just kind of hangs out in space in the middle of the receiver, and that's one of the reasons why the full auto conversion on this is going to be interesting to say the least. Now, this receiver itself is actually a US-made receiver. Uh, this is a Two Rivers Armory uh, rebuild of this Type 1. I think they did a pretty damn good job. 
they clearly put a lot of time and effort into uh, just little nuanced details that really nobody would really be able to pick up on, but I, I appreciate that they did that. Even little things like markings on top of the rivets, that's just kind of cool. This is another gun out of the uh, Vickers collection that I was able to pick up thanks to Sienna Armory. And yeah, it's just really cool to be able to identify all of the differences of this gun. I know I'm saying that a lot, but it's really kind of cool, especially as a big AK nerd, just to see firsthand and be able to hold in my hands and just look at all the little tweaks and, and details down to like the rear sight uh, block, the, uh, the gas tube retaining lever here. Uh, is is just stamped and it's just it's it's just different there's so many little little just nuanced details that I never would have known had I not been holding one in my hands everything down to the gas block the front sight block it's it's just cool oh and I, I can't believe I was about to leave this out the type 1 grips uh, actually kind of becoming a little bit more famous for this uh, instead of one single pistol grip like uh, the AK well actually literally any other AK has this has two separate panels that uh, meet up and are screwed together on both sides of a little fin here. Neat little detail. I have no idea why they did it this way, but that's what they did. Lots of cool little stuff about this gun. It's just really, really, I just think it's neat. But anyhow, that's enough of the nerd shit, I think, for now. So, uh, well, time to get back out to the range. Now, one of the more interesting things about this gun in particular is the fact that it is an underfolder variant. Now, a lot of the Type 1 AK-47s had a fixed wooden stock, but this one has a good old trusty underfolder, which makes this a little extra cool. But just like any other AK underfolder, you can push this button in here, fold this stock gently, and uh, you can still access the selector, charge the charging handle, forget that you have a live round in the chamber anyway, and uh, yeah. fire the gun. And one of the cool things I figured out about this that not all AK variants can do is while the gun is on safe you can actually eject a live round which not all AKs can do while they're on safe so I thought that was kind of cool. All right now the ammo that we're using for this is 762 by 39 brass case bellum ammo from uh, Serbia. Now I can already hear you guys in the comments what happened to if it can't handle the steel then it doesn't deserve brass. Well I know for a fact that motherfucker can handle some steel. But you know, come on. It's a piece of history. It traveled 70 something years to get here. The exact date is incalculable. Um, I'm shooting my museum piece just so I could show it to you guys. So forgive me for feeding it the good shit. If there was ever a rifle on this channel that deserved it, it's this one. This gun is more than iconic. This kind of feels like a snapshot in time. Uh, it feels like I'm, I'm holding a time capsule of sorts uh, from a day, an age, when uh, a young man uh, made this out of kind of a desperation to protect his motherland. And today I, an American, am going to use it to, to shoot a White Claw. That's what we do here. It's also worth pointing out this is the original barrel in this gun. So this is a full-on representation of how this gun would have handled 762 by 39 against a White Claw in 1949. Three, two, one. Say so it handled it quite well. Pretty sure this is not one of the tests included in the original Russian trials uh, that led to the adoption of the AK-47, but personally, I think it should be. Now, if I haven't made it clear already, I am absolutely in love with this gun. This is one of those things that has kind of been on my bucket list to own. I always kind of wanted one. Never really thought I'd be able to get one. And I'm, I'm not kidding when I say that, but here it is. And uh, the reason that I have it is honestly because of you guys. What you've allowed me to do with the channel, uh, pursue my dreams and, and just really collect really neat pieces of history like this. I kind of owe that all to you guys. So from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it. This is why I'm gonna keep making cool content or at least content that I think is cool. Hopefully you guys do too. I, get to do, I just get to do stuff like this and it's just really cool to me. So anyways, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Hopefully this was 
interesting to you. Hopefully you learned a little bit and it was just really, really good, classy AK porn. But uh, anyways, that's all I've got. As always, I'll see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. All right, so now let's talk about this Type 1. Oh, <laughs> let me not do that. It's so fucking awkward, bud. To the blooper reel. So they rivet in those overhangs on the front trunnion uh, to the receiver, and uh, they grind them for, uh, fuck. Now something else that's interesting about this gun is that it is an underfolder variant. Um, there... Now one of the other thing. Now one of the other interesting things about this gun in particular, goddamn.